All right, welcome back to About Even, punters and dribblers. Welcome back. The number one betting show in the world brought to you by our good friends at Ned's. Number one betting show in the world, number one betting agency in the world. That would be Ned's. We punt with Ned's. If you're going to punt with Ned's, do it responsibly. You can also join our About Even group in the Ned's app. Um, go to our Instagram. You'll find the tiles and shit. There's like a unique code you can get in there. We'll be in there over the weekend with the ponies. We will be at Eddie's Bucks, but, you know, I wouldn't guarantee that Eddie will be in there. I, Eddie's probably going to be in some sort of like gimp suit getting whipped, but we will be in there at some stage giving out some tips and shooting the shit with you. So that's in the Ned's app. Welcoming everyone back again. Episode, well, not episode one. First episode of the new season. Episode one. Yeah. Episode yeah. one. Of episode four. Yeah. Of season four. Not it. Yeah. Like season four. Episode week one. Week one of week one. Season yeah, four. Yeah. 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 Eddie Seb Rando. Yeah. How are we? Terrific. Terrific, as you say, mate. Got the Bucks coming up this weekend. I'm just like, I'm a little bit anxious about it. Mm. I'm yep. not gonna. I'm gonna sit here and tell fucking Porky Pies. Don't like, tell Porky Pies. I'm a little bit anxious about it, but I'm very excited as well. Um, pumped for it. Do you know what I'm excited? About? I hope. To, I hope to bring good energy to us on the Saturday. Yes. and I feel like I will. Yeah, clean slate is what I'm liking. Back to a level playing field. Rando's first real asterisk free season. Sebo back to fucking. Parody with us. Mm. I am pissed off though because last week when the rain came through, I had Tom Kim as my golfer. Well, you stole him off me, so I had him as well. well. You didn't have him in there. You well, said I hadn't even put him in yet. Different. I hadn't even put you him said in. You were going to go because I got there and you anyway. stolen him from me. You said I'm going to do someone different anyway. No, you'd already had Tom Kim in there, and I was like, well, but thank yeah. God for the rain. Did Tom Kim win? Yeah. yeah. Thank God for the rain. Paddy Cant sh- shat the bed on the 18th. Shout out to the Paddy Cant. Yeah. Yeah. Paddy Cant loves this like um this time of year, doesn't he? Seems to play every fucking tournament every week. Yeah, he's around a bit in like... Like the big yeah. dogs take a bit of time off, a bit of R&R. Paddy yeah. Cance is just out there. Yeah. Grinding. Doing the damn thing. But as I said, thankfully, the rains came and no one was betting last week. And so we start this week, even keel. Yeah. Week one season Exciting. Four. On that though, Sebo, you have been still picking winners, whether it be on the on the dishes, whether it be on the, on the horses. Do you feel like you're still in touch? Well, look, oh, there's you go through, and maybe not everyone, but definitely some people can relate to this, that you just go through patches in your life. And even yesterday, I played some golf and sank two 20-foot putts on a hole one or two for birdie. You pick a random dish here, it gets up. You pick a golfer, it gets up. You just Sometimes you go in these patches. Mm, you're in a purple patch. They're called oh, purple yeah. patches. Oh, yeah, pur- yeah. But like I'm a bipolar, like almost everything. Like I can, if I golf, I can either get birdies or I can get tens. You know, punting, I can come last or I can come first. Like I don't, I don't work middle ground. No, basically, your like, your dishy <laughs> tries last Friday, and then you sort of had a bit similar on Saturday. But your dishy tries in the about even group were fucking a thing of beauty. Well, you just gotta like they were yeah. calling you the dishy king. I I I. It's a crown I'll happily wear. Um, <laughs> I think you. I think you wear it with pride. Yeah. Yeah. I love. Let's yeah. Be Can I get a hat that has Dishy King on it? Like, we might have to get you a Dishy King hat. <laughs> Dishy, a Dishy King shirt, hat, or shirt would be fun. Yeah, that actually would good. be good. Yeah. Maybe we just turn that into merch for everyone, so it's not just Sebs. Yeah, Dishy a little King. Saturday dish. Well, like it's your Friday Arvo punting hat. Mm. Sa- you know, you need yeah. a punting hat. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, do. yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah. Like I think because I love. We'll be doing a punting hat. Yeah. Everyone loves a punt, right? And you know, it is that. I personally like it on the Friday Arvo. You knock off work at like three, maybe go to the pub and you kind of have a few punts and you're like, I'm not going to have a big night, but maybe I could, but like, I'm just chilling like, and I just want to have a few punts. And then your Saturday one as well. I don't know if that's so much more a hat vibe. Maybe it is more of a t-shirt vibe, but like you have bespoke stuff for marathons or yep. or golf or yep. running. True, or, attire. Or, or, you, why isn't there punting attire? You know what I mean? Like something where you can it's go, a, it's a great... <laughs> Great point. Yeah. Yes. I think a punting hat is something you need to be like for luck. To yeah. Channel yeah. positive yeah, yeah. vibes. You need yeah. to have it on. Yeah. yeah. That or a jacket. Yeah. Well, we still do have to get into the Boots Boys jacket. We L- can move that. Tonka. Less attainable the jacket though. Hat you can just throw yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. You know the jacket I mean? has got to be earned. Where's my punting hat? Throw yeah. it on. Anyway, That's punters it. and dribblers, coming up, we've got the uh, Rugby World Cup futures. We're going to have some bets on the games this weekend. The Rugby World Cup's a little bit different. They choose to not name their teams until after the games are played. So it's very difficult for the markets to be put up. So we don't have the odds, but they will all be on the socials. Thankfully, we're all pretty tapped in rugby league-wise, so we know what we're sort of looking at. But we'll do the Rugby World Cup. 
Um, Haney v. Cambosis 2. The Everest. Kitchen sink multi. Beautiful. 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 No accountability this week. Why is that, Tom? Because season four, week one. Yep. yep. Starting um, fresh. Well, so we did the season review last week. We did. Which was reviewing season three. So. Which means that there's no accountability this week. Which is nice. Because we haven't had any bets on. Except if you wanted to keep me accountable, I had an awful weekend. I'll just be accountable to myself. I, I, I bet awfully. Oh, in the group? Yeah. 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 Like, I started yeah. with 100 bucks on... On horses and, and greyhounds and shit. And I checked this morning. I still have a hundred bucks. Oh, that's nice. So I'm about even. You are. Well, I'm not about even. No, you I are am even. Even Stephen. I yeah. people in the in the group started basically. Every time I would put a bet on, they were like, "Well, fuck, I'm on that horse. You've ruined it for me." And invariably, I had. Mm. That is old flame. I think <laughs> in Caulfield with Jamie Carr, and it was paying two dollars, and everyone jumped on that, and it came dead last. Yeah, yeah. dude, like a multiple, dead last. Worst run of Jamie Carr's life. Yeah. They were saying. Yep. Just because Tom put seriously because you were on it, yeah. Were and you, there were so a you bunch. Were, were you fucking everyone on the weekend, dude? You, <laughs> you know kept what? That quiet. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was in the group, so it wasn't really that quiet. People saw it, um, but it was. There were like some really close seconds. I was getting some. I was getting unlucky as well. Was this the cube? Yes. Some were cube. I actually what I was doing, and I I don't know. I've just started doing this, but I get the cubes tips. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes, well, I didn't get them from Rando this week, but then a uh, friend of the show, Timmy Mack, and then you ma- he sent ma- some. Do you match them? And then I get, a, I get some from Pun Hub, and I sit there, and I'm just going, okay, where can I find some uniformity here? I'll tell you where. None. Not one of my fucking tipsters had any crossover, so it was impossible. If I get uniformity out of my tips that have been sent in... You go. Oh, you that, go. that gets me horny. That's what I do, but I also, if there's a pie chart, still 30% is by... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, no, of I mean, course, yeah, but like, like very rarely is there going to be uniformity. But when there is, <laughs> yeah. you have to. That's take basically that. the planets aligning. Yes, in the yeah. Sky. Yeah. and I don't know yeah. how often the planets align. I don't think they do. They're not very often. They do sometimes. Yeah, we've seen Tomb Raider. All of them. Great film. Oh, planets, planets <laughs> can, but not the planets. Yeah. There's a time when all the planets align. I don't think so. Nah, they're def- seen Tomb Raider, dude. It's in, it's in Tomb Raider. Watch Tomb Raider. <laughs> well, my apologies. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so if the planets align, you must have a little, a little something, something on it. We are releasing a basically a tips, a pony tips podcast, which will be out Saturday mornings. You'll be pleased to know that it doesn't feature any of uh, our tips. We've got. Um, Porter from Punt Hub, he'll be coming on, and it's just going to be a nice little quick wit through some value so you can just pump it while you're waiting for your coffee or waiting for your mate to arrive at the pub on a Saturday morning. Some jam. Doing the, the chores, the making Doing your the own chores. bacon egg, walking the dog, walking the dog, whatever. Easy, you like, yeah. yeah. Mate, yeah. 9 a.m., 9.30, yeah. bang, whip yeah. that in. Quick yeah. little thing, sit, sit down with the up. form, mark it down, mark it down, and then get ready to rip and tear responsibly, of course. But let's get into some punting. What do we think about that? We, I like that, but I just kind of realised going through the run sheet, are we not doing unit scoopers in season Ooh, four? That's a good question. Because we, we took them out last week. And well, we that was only because we didn't bet them, but I think we do have to do a unit scooper this week. So let's just get through them. Yeah, unit scooper through, will we'll be the last out, yeah. thing, and we'll work the unit <laughs> scoopers out later. This is a, this is on the run. This is what <laughs> professionals do. To be fair, I looked at the kitchen sink multi, and I thought that was the unit scooper, so I did put a unit scooper in there instead. Oh, right. uh, well, yeah. too late to change it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. Rugby League World Cup. First game. Is this to kick off the tournament? It yep. is in England. You yep. would assume yes. that the host nation kicks it off. We have got England v Samoa at St. James Park, Newcastle. So England are paying two thirty five. Samoa favourites at a dollar fifty eight. I fucking didn't look at that when I put my bet on. Uh, the line is three and a half, and the total is forty and a half points. Now, Rando, what are you doing, old son? Well, I think England are great value at two dollars thirty five here. They had a trial game last weekend against Fiji, who were missing their Penrith players, um, but other than that, were pretty full strength. And England tore them to shreds, fifty to nil. Um, among those players, George Williams and Dom Young had an f- absolute day out. Dom Young had two assists and a try. Uh, so I really like the right side of England to have a crack there. That means they'll be facing up against Taylor May and uh, 
Isaac Tungo. Um, presumably in the centres there for Samoa. Uh, the Panthers' uh, left side defence was their weakest side as well during the season. So I do like England to take advantage of that right side. If they are going to win this game, they've got to win that contest. And I think if you put Dom Young and England together, you'll get some juicy odds, hopefully over $3. We don't have the markets, as you mentioned, because the team lists aren't out. But that's my way of thinking for this bet. Okay. okay. I like it. You can't help it when it's backed up with some stats. I... To be honest, when I looked at it, I was mm. like, I was thinking that England would be favourites. It's annoying that Samoa are because I think England should be, but I like Samoa. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Tonka, also, just by the way, if you're hearing a dog moan, Tonka, I don't know if he doesn't like my bet. I don't know if that's <laughs> him sort of showing disdain for the fact, or like for my opinion about fucking England and Samoa, Tonka, but I'd appreciate if you just let me get it out first. Yep. So I think, I think Samoa and I think To'o. Now, that's going to be paying fuck all because Samoa's favourites. But you know what? You know what season four is about? Yeah. New Testament. New Testament time. Yeah. Uh, so what but, does that look like? Well, it just looks yeah. like some more conservative. Does it look... But, that's not NTT, though. NTT was just old Old Testament Tom with so, the same crazy bets <laughs> with a few stats on each leg. No, New Testament <laughs> Tom, unfortunately, was corrupted very early on into the New Testament. So I was New Testament for a couple of weeks. I was going well. And then it sort of... I think I was actually New Testament before Rando came on. Then once a, once Rando came on, I sort of... I lost my way a little bit because he fucking usually is in tight shirts and he's... Dark, yeah, yeah. You know? and, he looks, and he looks really hot and you're like, holy shit, stop looking so good. Yeah. Sweat Glenn and down your bod. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn everyone on. I can see why you corrupted him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... Sex corrupts. Yeah, it does. We know that. Sex corrupts, absolutely. Yeah. Absolute, yeah. absolute sex, sex corrupts, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Correct. I, um, I like England, and I'll tell you why I do. I just think that Samoa haven't had they haven't seen enough winners as a side like it's sort of the first time that all the NRL studs with Samoan heritage have gone over there and I just don't know if they're going to have enough time to get dialed I feel like England and again this is vibe punters and dribblers I feel like England are more set and I just think that given it's game one straight out the gates yeah. maybe they'll get the jump on them and with 235 I'm just not going to ignore 235 it's good value mm. well you got like as I mentioned, Samoa hasn't even trialed together as a team yet. They didn't play last weekend at all, so they haven't actually had a. Full and when run. they and then when they played, all the Origin stars weren't playing yeah, anyway. Exactly. Yeah, but do you know what you can't discredit, which England doesn't have and Samoa does? Superstars. Mana. 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 It's a good point, and maybe Mana wins the day, Tom. Yeah. Maybe Mana does win the day, yep. but maybe it takes time to build Mana, and that's what I'm hoping for. I'm just gonna take. I'm just gonna take the odds here, and I think England. With that price, I'm going to take it. I'm going to get Sam Tompkins in. Do you remember Sam Tompkins? I do remember Sam dream? Tompkins. He came over for an ill-fated trip. He went to the Warriors <laughs> yeah. and got a little bit homesick. The Poms, yeah. they well, got no, but he also just didn't come out and rip. He was like the best player which in I the think, world. Which I think exasperated his homesickness. Well, the like, the mistake the was going to New Zealand. Like, yeah. if, you're not going to come here and fuck it to New Zealand. And Silly. 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 But Sam Tompkins, uh, I believe, went back to the motherland yeah, and did. ripped again. Yeah, well, because he's playing Super League. So, so he goes in, England into Tompkins. Again, we're starting our conservative season four. Maybe it's a new way of the world. Maybe we saw our units after last year, in rugby league specifically, and go, it's time for change. Time for change. Uh, especially after you came dead last. Yeah. <laughs> well, I need to change, clearly. Sebo, what are you doing? Look, I... Yeah, Samoa are favourites, but, like, what, have they ever beaten England before? I don't uh, think yeah. they have. Have they, they, they've, have they ever beaten anyone higher than Tonga? I'm not sure. But that makes me excited because I'm loving the rise of rugby league on a world stage. Uh, the stronger each team is, the better. So I'm just... I'm not picking a result, but obviously the way my bet shapes up. I kind of am. Mm. But I am just going, um, like, my heart is just set on Samoa, you know, uh, it, relative to England, a small little Pacific Island nation rising up and tearing England down. I just want, <laughs> I want that to happen. I want to go, okay, bang. It's like starting with a winner, race one, round one. You just go, bang. What I want to happen is start it. So I want that to happen, and that just makes the Rugby League World Cup a hell of a lot more interesting, even though they are favourites. But maybe that's just because everyone else wants that. So my bet, basically, I'm just taking a contingent of back-to-back -back grand final winners as try scorers. Love it. It's like... These guys have played NRL. They've won back-to-back -back premierships. Well, May wasn't in it, but, like, which was, like, two weeks ago. 
Mm. It was long ago. Yeah. Right. Like, so, sorry, England. Like, you guys just don't have the pizzazz, the pace. I don't know. So, I'm going Crichton May Toto. Anytime try scores. No idea what that will pay, but it will be out on the Instagram. But look, back to back Penrith winners, Samoa rising up, England. Look, it, when it, most people think of England, they think of boring, boring mm, yeah. stuff. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. I okay. also hate the English. I just hate the English. Yeah, well, fair. everyone does. Everyone does. I can't support the English. Uh, Lippy this week is intern Braden. Intern Braden, one of the great stayers in about even history. Just he's always there and about, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's always there when the whips are cracking. He yeah. is. Good deckhand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's, a, he's one of the great deckhands all time. Yeah. Like, if there was a fucking Olympic Games for deckhands, he'd win gold. Yeah, Braden's yeah. just always knocking about. You yeah. see him yeah. everywhere. When your ship's in the storm and yeah. everyone's like, I'm bunkering down in yeah. the hull. That's right. He's Braden's going up, up He's there. up there yeah. and he's still getting shit done. Yeah. Sailing from mast to mast. He's in the fucking crow's nest up top. Yeah. Titanic, <laughs> could, Titanic could have used someone like Braden. Oh, he would have so. spotted that iceberg a mile yeah. out. He wouldn't have been watching Leo and Kate no, going no, at it. Because no, no. well, he's a professional. Yeah, he's just spotting iceberg. He would have been up in the crow's nest touching himself. <laughs> he would have had the eyes on the job. And he yeah. wouldn't have lost those fucking binoculars. No, he wouldn't have. Because he's so, a professional. Yeah, he's a professional. Yeah. Anyway, so shout out to intern Braden. What's he doing? He's got Samoa 1-12 to 12 into May. It's a professional bet. What's well, a deckhand yeah. bet? Yeah. It's a deckhand bet. It's a deckhand bet. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Ah, it's a deckhand yeah. bet. He's there. Yeah. You know what? He's not watching two people fuck on top of a deck of the Titanic. <laughs> he has his eyes on the prize, and that's Iceberg. So shout out to intern Braden. Well done, mate. One of the great deckhands all time. All now we move on. Time. Australia v Fiji. Australia, a dollar one, shock horror. Fiji <laughs> should be illegal to yeah, have a dollar one. Obviously. Yeah, like. and Fiji are thirteen dollars <laughs> uh, heading Lee Stadium in Leeds. The line thirty eight and a half total, fifty six and a half points. Um, again, this is just—it's obviously Australia, right? And it's going to be a humping of note. I'm going to show a thirteen plus. Obs into a Joshy card double. Do you know what 13 plus is paying? Dollar Fucking three. dollar two. one. A dollar <laughs> one. A dollar one. <laughs> well, this isn't fantastic. Just taking this up really new taking testament. Up this, is new testament shit. <laughs> this, is, this is new testament <laughs> shit. Dollar 40. Dollar. <laughs> I'm going Australia 13 plus into Joshy card two or more. I'm, I'm assuming that's some real New Testament conservative odds. But again, it's going to happen. So that's okay. It's about just starting off on the right foot, collecting units and moving on. I wouldn't mind having a third championship under my fucking name, so keeping it conservative. Nice. Mm. What are you doing, Ed? I am going a big Australian humping. I think that, you know, as a patriotic guy, I just want to see our boys go out there and fucking win and win well. Fiji lost to PNG when they were heavily favoured in the trials. I just It did seem to me at the time like Fiji was still trying to work out the creases. And I think running into Australia straight out the gate is the worst thing that they could possibly do. Tonka's really fucking Yeah, he's annoyed. Yeah, Why Tonka- you? What's wrong with you today, mate? Can you shut up, Tonka? You're never like this and you're fucking annoying me. Now, Australia, I am taking at the line of minus 38 and a half. Now, that might be a meaty line, but we've got a meaty side. Yeah. And that's what I'm relying on. Now, Australia, if they are to win minus by 38 and a half points or more, so 39, technically, punters and dribblers, then I think Latrell scores, I think Addo Carr scores, I think Holmes scores, and I think Teddy score. You put that all together, and I'm just going bold out the gates. Yep. Fuck it. Go bold. Yep. Go bold it's again. A, like, it's a straight with dollar one. What do you, yeah. what do you want me to do with it? Well, yeah. you know what? I sh- I'd, I'd ask myself that same question. If these aren't dartboard bet matches, I've never, like, they are, they're not, yeah, well, I'm yeah, not here. Yeah, yeah, like, you just, you may as well use the dartboard and just go, at a dollar one, Australia versus Fiji, you just got to fucking just pick tries. I really should have done like, that. Maybe, maybe I'll, yeah, we'll get some dartboard. Uh, we'll do a I'll dartboard. Do next week. No, we'll we can it. even just do, we'll do a separate Sep- anytime try yeah. score a dartboard bet for Australia, Fiji, yeah. Fiji, and for New Zealand v Lebanon. Perfect. Because I think that's just, you leave it to the power of the darts. Yeah. Now, this isn't the power of the darts <laughs> in, this, in this bet because I didn't have a dartboard while I was crafting this. But look, I've just gone three try scorers again. And originally it was just two and it was just Murray and Teddy. Why? Because I thought, give it to the captains. Give it, to, give it to the captains. To the skips. Yeah, give it to the skips. I think they'll both probably stay on. Well, Murray, like, you don't really know. Once they start getting to, you know, 28 nil, maybe they start rotating a few people a bit more. I don't know. But I think the skips stay on. 
uh, for as long as they can. And then I thought, well, you know what? Just throw in Joshy Carr, which Fuck. is probably... He's what? jinxed Joshy Carr yeah, now. Yeah, no, far out. He's, jin- he's, jin- yeah. he's jinxed. Well, maybe this will break the jinx. A quick, yeah, Hopefully he- a new season, they just wash the He'll way. be paying, what, $1.10? For an any time? Dollar five, probably. Yeah. yeah. So I don't even know if it's worth it, but uh, the odds will be on Instagram. Beautiful. All right. And what is the deckhand doing? Rando, have you had a bit? I'll let the deckhand Oh, go sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> no Rando hasn't this. gone. No, no, no. Look, we don't want to. Listen, he's a deckhand. You shouldn't be going before <laughs> you. Deckhands go last. <laughs> deckhands go last, <laughs> if at all. Um, oh, once again, I'm on the Australia bandwagon. Their lowest l- winning margin against Fiji is 32 points, which was at the World Cup last time in England. Um, so potentially might not be able to get the line, but I back Australia here, minus 38 and a half. Uh, Fiji also lost 50-0 to England the previous week before. I don't think the new players coming in will help their cause. They also don't have any established hearts. I think they've got uh, Brandon Wakeman, Wakeham and I think uh, Kevin Naguam is slotting into six as well. Oh, so really? They've really got no attacking power, so okay. it's just going to be Australia <laughs> just <laughs> running over them. Um, <laughs> Most of the tries that they conceded, as I mentioned, England just destroyed them on the right side. So, And I'm when was this? This was last week. 50 nil. 50 nil. 50 nil. Yeah. And that's England. That's England. Made England. If I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't know Brandon Wakeham and Naguama were the halves. Neither did I. Yes. <laughs> well, the teams haven't been named, have they? <laughs> no. You can just look at the best 17. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah they're going to absolutely rip and tear. So the right side, <laughs> Jeremiah and Nanai will be there. He's going to score a try. He scores 17 this season. Teddy also loves to roam around the right-hand side. He'll get over. And then the Fox, whether he's on the left or the right, the jury's still out on that because they basically got two, well, they've named two left centre wings in mm. homes and um, Tao Lungi, who usually run the left, and then Mitchell and Adokai usually on the left as well. So uh, whichever way it goes, Fox will get over. So that will just add a bit more value. Um, so Oz minus 38 and a half, Nanai, Teddy, and the Fox is my bet. I'm, can I be honest with everyone here? I'm furious at my bet. I know I'm New Testament, <laughs> and maybe this is Old Testament trying to fight through it. I'm trying to fight it down. But I'm, I'm get furious up. at my bet. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? It feels like you didn't really do a whole lot of uh, research. Well, <laughs> and you, you know, know what? You, you don't know need to do research. But you know, but you know the ga- You know what the giveaway was? Australia 13 plus <laughs> yeah. at a dollar. Yeah, you, you didn't look at the even look at the line. <laughs> Listen, I didn't, and that was a mistake. It was a mistake. And I don't have much to sort of say for myself. You know what I mean? Like, I'm actually embarrassed. But, uh, yeah, I, I just, I mean, if you guys would want to give me, like, another opportunity, I can change my bet. I don't think so. No. Uh, okay. All right, look, I, I, it was worth it. Because it's going to get up for you, though. So no, It's worth it if it doesn't bank, get up. Just bank the unit. I'll just, well, I'm going to have to. If Imagine Joshy Carr goes down with, like, a fucking cr- injury or something in the first minute. That's going to... Mm. Don't gonna say sc- that to uh, Joshy Carr. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't mean a bad wood. one. Maybe just like a cork. Whatever. They can be pretty bad. They can be bad. <laughs> they can be bad. Now, mm, now we do need deckhand. Deckhand. Fuck. Straight minus 38 and a half. Holmes, Teddy. Beautiful. Thank you, deckhand. Next up, we have New Zealand v Lebanon in the sheet, Eddie. It still has England v Samoa. I'm assuming that these odds are reflective of New Zealand v Lebanon, despite it says England v Samoa. That is, the the, uh, the odds are correct. Yeah. Halliwell, Jones Stadium, Warrington. England, uh, New Zealand, $1.01. Lebanon. Hey, Tonk. Mate, I'm going to put you in the car if you do it again. <laughs> Tonka. He's got a bully stick or something you can have. Have no. you got any chow for him? You got something you can give him? I'll check the cupboard. As I carry on here, punters and dribblers, <laughs> fucking Tonka will not shut the fuck up. And Tonka's a friend. Tonka's, Tonka's Eddie's son. I'm basically an uncle to him. He won't shut the fuck up. And we love him, but he won't shut yeah, the fuck look, up. Yeah, but look, he's just... He's, if Wallace is in the same position, tied up, and sees a bunch of four people talking bets, and he's not part of it, and he can't get over to the couch and just give Do a Do we need tips. to give Tonka a bet? <laughs> I think we need to give Tonka a bet, Eddie. You, while you're over there, have a chat with him and just give him, give him a fucking unit scooper, all right? <laughs> <laughs> give him one of your units. Oh, no, let's give, him, let's give him a leg in the kitchen sink. <laughs> we'll give him a leg in the kitchen sink. I think he might want a leg in the kitchen yeah, sink, okay? Yeah. And maybe we pick a pooch for him. I don't know, but <laughs> it's, New, it's New Zealand v. Lebanon. New Zealand $1.01, Lebanon 26. The line 38.5. The total is 52.5 points. 
Again, a humping's en route here would see it would seem I have gone a little bit harder, a little bit more Old Testament in this one. I have gone New Zealand 13 plus again, which obviously it's safe. It's safe, yeah. but I've gone Manu two tries, Mulatalo and Dylan Brown anytime. Those odds again aren't released because of the teams, but that's going to be paying something. It's probably not going to be paying that much. Not as much as you think. I don't think yeah. any of these bets are going to be paying as much as no. you think. And like, so it's going to be like a five legger that's going to be paying yeah. fuck all, but still. You would assume that happens. Yeah. You would assume. Rando, what do you got? Um, I think New Zealand are going to hump uh, here. They've only played Lebanon once. That was way back in 2000. They won 64 nil. So uh, there's really too much, a bit too hard to see what's going to happen there. But they did rip and tear a second-tier lead side on the weekend, 74 nil. Sebi Chris had a hat-trick in the first 20 minutes. Uh, Jordan, Hughes, uh, Jordan Hughes, Jerome Hughes was just running um, a muck as well on that right-hand side. Lebanon, their left edge is probably their weakest. Uh, they'll have a Bass Miski, a former Manly Seagull player. Don't think he got a run on the park, maybe one or two. Uh, but he's covering on that left-hand side where you got Josh Mansour on the right. A Bass, um, the guy who looks like Josh Mansour, right? Yes, exactly. They Mansour look like from brothers. Wish. Yes, absolutely. Um, so he'll be on the other from side. Wish now. Yeah, they, they are. No disrespect. <laughs> no disrespect. Full respect to Joshy yeah, Mansour yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, the whole right side is where I'm looking at. Manu, Rapana, and Hughes to all score and New Zealand to cover the nine line pretty pretty well. Okay. All right. Now we go to you, Sebo. Yeah, look, I tried to pick, you know, you can't just pick wingers in year 80 because they're probably paying $1.30 or something. But I am picking Mulatalo. Mulatalo. Can't pick wingers, but. He's just reliable. <laughs> like, he gets you a leg. You, yeah, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you definitely wouldn't pick, pick wingers. Well, what you do, what you I don't know do why is just wingers. Yeah, just wingers. You don't, you don't pick wingers, but I've got no, more. No, you can't pick <laughs> just wingers. <laughs> okay. And then, so, Nikora, Britain, he, uh, picking him as well. Again, he'll be short odds, but he's usually around three, four bucks in the NRL. Uh, I think he'll crash over. And then Hughes. So, I think New Zealand, when you're versing, when it's basically a trial run, I think they want to try test out as many combinations as possible, as many different plays, as many trick plays, as many whatever. Like, it's not just like, – you're not versing Australia here and you need a strict game plan. It's a bit of fuck at footy. Yep. So I've got three guys who are placed at different areas around the field who can get over the line. That's yep. basically where I'm at. Well, this is their toughest opposition yep. in the pool. So they don't really need to – they can just fuck around, basically, and they'll still win by They'll yeah. beat them. This Absolutely. is their toughest. This is their toughest This pool, is their so toughest. Honest. Who yep. else is in the pool? Uh, they've got, I think – Oh, fuck. That's testing me now. Well, like, like Turkey or no something. One. Yeah, basically. Like. They've got, yeah, they've basically got Turkey. <laughs> Lebanon <laughs> Lebanon is the standout side. Other than them, is interesting. I can tell you who else is in their pool in a moment. Um, but, Eddie, while I do that, what is your bet, buddy? Mate, I'm taking New Zealand minus 38 and a half. I think, like Australia, they go out there and they hump and they hump well. I just think they'll be too oiled. Their side's fucking legit. Mm. And I don't think, even with Mitch Moses playing seven for Lebanon, I don't know if they're going to be able to cut the mustard. I think it'll be one of those situations where they just go, listen, boys, play late at the line and get the ball out to Mulatalo, and there should be an overlap. So I think he gets at least two Mm. tries. I've got him in there 4 2. I've also got Joey Manu in there because I'm like, are you telling me that a certain part in an 80 minute game, big Joey Manu isn't going to fucking crash over? Like, I'd say like multiple the, times. Exactly. So you put him in for one minimum. I can't see a world in which they can stop him for 80 minutes consecutively. Mm. So New Zealand minus 38.5, Mulatalo 2 plus Manu to score a try. I will let you know I've just uh, done some research on the pools here. New Zealand. Do have a tough one. Lebanon, Jamaica, and Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> Jamaica could test them. At yeah, least Jamaica. the minus 100 line. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jamaica, <laughs> Jamaica are the testing material. I wonder if there'll be that. a... If there's 100 points scored in a game, it is probably going to be New Zealand v Jamaica or Ireland. Is there a single NRL player in the Jamaica squad? Uh, I don't no, know. I no, wouldn't be able to not. tell you. Just Jamaica. There's a couple of Super League players, but that's about yeah, it. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, have they have they employing Jamaica might have even looked to employ the the holiday rule. Yeah, if they might. I'll tell you what, if you've holidayed there, you're eligible. I'll tell I like you what that. is funny though, like European and South American countries when they're looking at the like soccer World Cup, probably say the same shit about Australia. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 100%. even though we're not hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we're here thinking it's two thousand six every four years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not. Yeah. We haven't been out of the pool since. <laughs> if it if it makes it even no offense to Jamaica, but they lost to Cumbria, which I believe is a country. 
in Europe. Is and that? they lost 13 plus to them with a the full string side. Okay. So. <laughs> so Cumbria. And, and that Cumbria. sounds like a region. So that little England. region. Yeah, and yet Cumbria couldn't here. make the fucking World like Cup. Like a little dot in the UK. So Cumbria has been absolutely A non-metropolitan there. county. Is that like an Isle of Man type country? Yeah, like one basically. of those weird. Okay. Yeah. What, so, sh- so Cumbria should have got a run. Is that what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. All right. And we've got Braden the deckhand. He's gone New Zealand minus 38 and a half. Nakora Mulatalo any time. That's going to happen. Yeah, that Good is. Good one, Decky. Nice, De- Decky. Hideki. <laughs> now we move on to the tw- uh, some Hideki. futures here. So we've got the top tournament try scorers, top Australian, top New Zealand try scorers, and the Rugby League World Cup winner. So for tournament try scorers, I have gone Joey Manu. I'm just a big Joey Manu fan, and I just be fucking shreds. So I'm hoping, and I'm Kiwi. So whatever. One thing about Manu though, I'm like, while he's at fullback, is he going to maybe show off like his ball playing, ball playing ability? Very like, possibly. You know, I'm not going to try run and crash over and be a hero because I do that for the Roosters. Yes. But I'm going to show people that I could be an elite I think fullback. I was just more, I mean, look, you do look at New Zealand's pool and that's nice, but it's more of a, I am still trying to find a little bit of value and I feel like he might be a bit more than your, your Joshy cars of the world. So How much is he? I don't even know. I just put him in. I um, that was a vibe. That was a vibe-based selection. Let's be honest. This is a guy who's been picking thirteen plus. Of course, he didn't look at the odds. <laughs> we shouldn't be shocked by that. We shouldn't be shocked. No, you shouldn't. As a people, well, it's not an odds-based decision, right? He's seventeen to one. There you go. That's good, dude. Look at that loser fucking pool they're in. Seventeen bucks. Um. Anyway, Edward, you go. I like Josh Adokar, and I think it's... I'm just liking the narrative. Mm. Everyone wrote him off when he went to the Bulldogs from the Storm, (laughs) said it was the end of his rep career. Look, he wasn't picked in origin. I think that was a mistake in hindsight. Be that as it may, Mal sees the player that he is and the potential that he's got and the throbber that he is, and I think he goes out there and he fucking walks away with the most tries in the tournament. Mm. Bit of a fuck you to the world. Yeah. That's how I see it going down. Now, uh, Rando and Seba. So you get 450 mm. for Josh Adokar, which I think yeah. is pretty good. Look, I'm, a, I'm the same as Eddie. Love the narrative. Um, there's basically nothing more to say. Mate, like, in, in Origin, yeah, who's overlooked? In an Origin, I feel it, it's a bit of a tougher game where you need to bring it out of your own end. These international games, especially not the final, which Australia will get to or semi or whatever, it's not even going to need to, those tough carries because they're just going to be walkovers. Mm. And when you've got the ball players and all the trill or uh, Munster inside you, it's just going to be like throwing the ball and there'll be an overlap from 30 metres out and he'll just canter in yeah. and score. Like, Brando, you got anything yeah. else to, to add to you, to the mm. Fox chat? Nah, just go for the Fox, I guess. I, I did my whole full spiel in last week's podcast, if you yep. heard it. So, yeah, I'm all for Josh Adekar, left side, right side. He's going to score. And he's going to play in all the games because Matt Burden's going to come in and Mal's definitely going to have him at Burden at six and Fox on the left wing for sure mm. if he comes on. So can't see him missing a game. Horny stuff. Horny, horny stuff. We now move just into the top try scorers for New Zealand Australia. For Australia, I have gone Joshy Carr mm-hmm. for obvious reasons, for everything we've just said. Eddie, you've gone the same. Mm-hmm. Rando gone the same. But peculiarly, I do want to try and get an understanding here, Sebo, of how you've got Josh Adokar top tournament mm-hmm. try scorer, yep. but Tuolangi top for Australia. Yep, because they're both paying around four dollars. So if one of them comes off, I've made plus money. Okay. Um, but so you, you basically you're wasting one. I, I'm wasting one because I believe it will be at a car. But if there's a cork or something ha- happens like that, I'm covering myself on the cork. It's a cork cover. I'm not. Cork yeah, it's a cork yeah. cover. I don't want to just go all in on two different markets from the same guy. So it's like I need a cork cover. Okay. Yeah. Cork, cork coverage. coverage. Yeah. Cork yeah. Coverage. Look, I mean. Bet wisely, punters and dribblers, yeah. this World Cup and include some court coverage. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful court coverage. Uh, now, for New Zealand, uh, Eddie, you and I, both in the same. I've gone Manu. I here. believe he's paying $4. Uh, Mulatalo's 275 off the top of the dome. Yep. A bit short for mine, Tom. Look, he may well get it, but Joey Manu's a thoroughbred. And if he gets his fucking. He gets his, what's the word? Tail up? as it were, sure. then I think he's good value at four bucks. Yep. Well, you're speaking for me there as well. I like Joey Manu. Rando, give uh, us your reasons. Renato Mulatalo, left side. Dylan Brown um, coming down that edge. I just see that their attacking flair is just going to be 
way too much there. They've got Isaiah Papali'i on top of that, coming down that left side. There's just too much going for them. So have to go Ronaldo here. All right. And Sebo, this one's... This is as long donkey as it gets. Yeah, look, I... This is Old Testament Tom. What? <laughs> uh, Mulatalo's, what, 275. Then, you know, there's a bunch of guys at three, four, five bucks. And I was like, it kind of... There could be a cork. You don't really know. And I thought... <laughs> you, you, we've woken up with a fascination for corks, mate. I said cork like a middle. minute ago. Now it's just all cork chat. No, but look, I, I tried to find some value here because I didn't like the 275. I hated the 275. Sure. Um, and Rappin is like three something, and I just thought... Three bucks now. Yeah, I learned something quite like the hard way. I think we all learned when the Roosters played the Tigers that sometimes when you're absolutely humping somebody, the ball doesn't even need to go to the wing because you've already broken the line multiple times before you, after two passes somehow. Mm. You don't even... Like Suwali'i didn't score on a 70-something humping. We did learn that the hard way. And so I thought... Who's someone who can score a try, who's definitely scored like a hat trick in the NRL, who sometimes gets up twice? And I thought, Jerome Hughes, he scores in the NRL regularly. Yeah, he doesn't get his hat hat trick as much as the wingers, but he can do it. So when New Zealand plays some of these shit sides, who are they playing again? Jamaica and Scotland. Jamaica and Scotland. Ireland. 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 When you've got the the toe of Jerome Hughes and the weak defence of that, he could just slip right through at first receiver and just run in for three tries, have one of those games... And then he's paying 51 bucks to once. And so I thought, you know, give that a shot. It's not crazy. It's not crazy that Jerome Hughes scores the most tries in a Storm versus whoever matchup. Why can't it happen in international Look, level? I might have a look <laughs> at it, but I, th- yeah, it's I think bold. it's more the nature of you're looking at like four or five games where he's got to be scoring them all the tries. I just need... He's got to try score it. Like, like I, think, I, think, I think, yeah, one game, sure, he yeah. could score a hat trick. But yeah. uh, is, is he going to do that? Every game for six games, seven games. I don't know. I don't know. But so, no, you don't. basically, I, I, I'm well, saying, I think the odds are suggesting yeah. that it's unlikely. But what I'm suggesting is, I reckon that yes, it's unlikely, but I think it would happen. I reckon the odds should be like thirty to one okay. instead of fifty to one. Okay. I think. I think if you've simulated this, you know, fifty times it would happen more than once, and that just means you're beating the odds. Wow. Well, okay. Yep. More than once. Yeah, because other if it was once, it just be. No, I'm saying you think it would happen more than <laughs> yeah. once. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Yep. It's, it's in. Okay. I've got. I can back up my my uh, my long shot. You know, it's not just a random long shot. Well, it's not <laughs> random, but it is a little bit. He does score tries though. Let's move on, and we get to just tournament winners. Who are we picking? Who are we picking? Tournament winners. I. I mean, it's it's boring, but it's Australia. They're gonna win. So a dollar fifty is what you'll get for that. Yeah, I'll, I just like I honestly can't stand anyone betting Australia. But I also uh, get that like they're almost unbackable. Like I am backing them because yeah, of the show, but I, but, but also like, like you know, you take a winner over a loser, right? And even if New Zealand is better better value, I still think one hundred percent that Australia. Dude, you know what that was? That was Old Testament coming through, and your response there brought me back onto the straight and narrow. You take winners. Take like, it, like if you, if I believe one hundred percent that Australia's going to win, which I do, why the fuck would I bet on anyone else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the odds are short, but I think they'll win. I think they'll win well. New Testament, Eddie. They've got better fucking players. They just do. This is what uh, this is what a loser looks like playing off his back. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's trying to turn everything around. I respect it. Try and do my best, Randa. Yeah, you got to go safe here. I can't see Australia losing. They've just basically won every World Cup um, in the last 50 years, besides that one that they let go to New Zealand in 2008 at home. Um, but other than that, New Zealand are good value at $4.50. Um, they've got a great forward pack, Jesse, uh, JFH, NAS, JWH, all these bloody... Uh, acronyms. Yeah, acronyms. Not acronyms. Hyphens. Hyphens. Sorry. But also acronyms that I'm turning them into. Um, right. So that is okay. Um, so yeah, you can look at that New Zealand side, but I just can't see a world where Australia doesn't doesn't win, mm. doesn't beat him in the semi, so that's who I'm going with. Look, I am taking the value. Like, I think Australia going to win. Absolutely, I think they're going to win. But 450, I reckon if you put, well, they're going to meet in the semi. It, yeah. It, um, if they're both healthy, I don't. It's basically getting 450 for New Zealand to beat Australia there, and you won't be getting that price on the day. So I'm taking the value now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Well, that's Rugby League World Cup, Punish Dribblers. Let's get into a little bit of pony tipping. What do we think about that? What do we think about that? We got the Everest. 
Everest this Saturday, uh, Ranwick, race number seven. As I said at the start of the show, we will be releasing a Saddle Club tip sheet podcast Saturday morning. A nice little quick thing for you to pound. But we will be doing our Everest tips on the show today because, you know, we got to at least touch on it. So we got the Everest. Who are we taking? Who are we looking at? What are we doing? You don't. You can, as Sebo's fucking bet will suggest, you don't just have to pick a winner here. Yep. Um, got one bet. Thought I'd make it an exotic. I, I love an exotic. I'm an exotic market guy. Mm, you you're know? like an exotic bird dealer. Yeah, exactly. You are, well, you are an exotic guy. Yeah. A Martin Kennedy yeah. of sorts. You are a Martin <laughs> Kennedy. That's right. It's probably a good way of looking at it. Get a few toucans out yeah. back, ready yeah, to go yeah, if yeah. anyone needs one. <laughs> So yeah. what are you doing then? Look, I, as people know who are in the Ned's chat group and have maybe listened to a podcast before, I'm a big fan of phone number trifectas in the dishes, which is the first three numbers after the 04 and you get one floater as well. So my number is 04125 and then I can pick another number and make a boxy trifecta. Out of it. Normally that's just a dishes tactic. Uh, but when I looked at the phone number numbers in this race, they're the horses that I really, really like. So I thought, you know what, let's just do it. So I'm standing it out because I really think the old strip is going to win here. I'd pr- out, but I'm st- putting him in. Oh, no, I'm not standing it out, sorry. I'm going one, two, five is all boxed trifecta. Mm-hmm. And then I've got the seven for second and third and then the six. So those ponies are basically, we've got Nature Strip, who got it for me last year. Probably will go back to back. Eduardo, then we've got Mazu, and then Overpass and Private Eye. So, ideally in this scenario, Nature Strip doesn't win it at all, doesn't even get in the placings, and then the multi is big. So, I'm putting two and a half units on it, which gets you roughly 90% of the trifecta pool. If Nature Strip wins and Eduardo comes second and then someone else comes third, I probably won't even make, I'll probably just make the money back. Strip doesn't win. We're on. We're mm. on. Okay. Interesting. And again, like you are listening to a, a savant at work. I'm not – I would like to talk shit about him, but I've been in that fucking Ned's group and seen what he's been doing and like it's <laughs> – Look, it may not make, intimidating. It may, it may just sound like complete and utter horse it, shit. Yeah, it might. Pardon the pun. It's but, a standout trifecta. But the proof's <laughs> in the pudding and the yeah. kid can pick a try. The so. kid can pick tries. And yeah. anyone who's in there, we've almost got a 1,000 people in there, so we're almost the biggest group on the fucking platform, punters, dribblers, so get in. But, like, I mean, I can't help it if we've got a savant here who picks fucking kid can, tries. Kid can yeah. pick tries. Look, yeah. And what we'll also do is we'll do a just standard four horses, boxy T voted on the Instagram stories by the punter and dribbler. Okay, so I like that. We'll get, we'll get, like... Community boxy T. Yeah, community... I don't know how to do it. We'll figure it out, but there will be a community boxy T that's the punter, dribbler power... That you know, we'll put a couple. Just of break down here. the race and yeah. like, so how many? How many are running? How many have we got nine. in the race? Sixteen. Six. Oh, is it nine? Oh, I've got sixteen. Oh, yeah. So break them down into fours and just go pick the so like the top. No. Yeah, but then you because you some could, of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. no, it's there's emergencies. There's twelve. Sorry, there's twelve. Sorry. 12, 12, 12. 12. The other guys are emergencies. We'll work it out. We'll figure it out. There will be a, be a way to do it. A way to do it. Beautiful. I'm going Mass Crusader now. I just didn't want to pick the favourite. And I saw William Pike and I saw Mask Crusader. It made me think Mask Singer. It's a show I hate. <laughs> so that's sort of where it went there. I don't have the greatest pony knowledge. I'm a guy, when it comes to ponies, who is given tips and I take tips. I don't go out there and read form. I think that's most punters as well. I think some of you fucks try and pretend <laughs> like you know what you're talking about. But it's best to just know who you are in your soul. And I'm a vibe guy, and I see Mask Crusader at 11 bucks. Number 11, I like. Mask Crusader, 11 bucks. Let's do it. I read Zorro instead of, you know, Mask Singer. I thought Zorro would be a... Zorro's more for you, dude. <laughs> Zorro's more of a you thing, you know? like I'm saying he's a Mask Crusader, Zorro. Oh, yeah. as in, wait, yeah, you're yeah. saying call him that? Or you're saying no, that's I'm why saying I would have thought of Mask Crusader? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, no, because of Mask Singer, dude. I saw you trying to desperately look for Mask Crusader references, and I thought maybe Zorro might. No, no, no. Mine's <laughs> Mask Singer. Mine's Mask Singer. Okay. Okay. That's... Um... <laughs> That's exciting stuff. <laughs> That's exciting stuff. Um, heavy track this weekend, punters and dribblers. Heavy track. 
probably going to be raining. If it's not raining, it will not have drained, I don't think. Nature Strip's drawn the widest barrier, barrier 12. One last year from barrier 10, which was the widest barrier that a, that a horse has won from at the time. So now, now he's going to he or she. Don't no. know if it's a girl or not. Uh, and now it's going from 12. I don't know if it's a girl or boy either. I think it's a boy. But... So it's drifted from a dollar ninety out to two twenty because of the barrier draw. I like Eduardo because of the name, obviously, yeah, yeah. but also it likes the fucking heavy going. So in the heavy, it's four wins, one second from six starts. In the soft, it's five wins, two thirds from eight starts. So it likes the heavy going. It's drawn barrier nine. I get eleven. I get eight fifty for it. So it's good value. And Nash Rewill is on board. Pretty good 850 is the second favourite. Yep. You just need nature strip to just have one little fuck up somewhere. Well, just but like, you know, if it's if it's fucking if it's three, four wide the trip, yeah. maybe he just gets the nod at the end, you know what I mean? Mm. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm just taking a bit of a bit more value in, in Eduardo at eight fifty. It's the mm. only horse in the pack that's been nature strip as well. So looking we, good. We like that. It's looking good. We like that. Um I'm going anti-Australian here but probably to make up for my World Cup bet I'm going for the Kiwi horse in this race Lost and Running. Uh 60% win record uh at 1200 meters at Randwick. Uh undefeated on heavy. It beat Mazu in its last up race 2 weeks ago. I think it was coming from about middle of the field with about 300 to go and just blew the pack away. So really like them. Um it's uh it's pipped Nature Strip by time as well in that 1,200 meet on heavy by seven hundredths of a second. So he has got the jump on him in terms of uh, track time. Obviously, a lot of conditions playing a part there, but I really do like uh, Lost and Running there. Of course, he hasn't been tested against the big dogs yet, so this will be his first big, big test. Big horses, you could say. Yeah, big horses, I can say, actually would be a lot more correct. So <laughs> I'm really liking Lost and Running here, but Eduardo and Nature Strip also something to look at. Uh, Nature Strip obviously being at barrier 12 is a worry and the prices uh, come out a fair bit ever since that barrier draw. But barrier draw hasn't seemed to play an effect on the average because each winner has been in a different barrier each time. There's no uh, pattern or trend there. Um, so it will be interesting, but I do like Lost and Running. And a quick shout out to Shades of Rose. I kind of like that uh, mare. It is a it is a female horse. Uh, to have a crack there, Mikavoy's riding it. He's won three of the five Everests as well. So he's got a good record. He knows this race like the back of his hand. Um, it, Shades of Rose has won seven of its last nine starts as Ooh, well. So I might have to have yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. 850 for a play. So it was $81 at this, literally on Wednesday, and it's come Ooh. down to 41 um, I'm definitely having some on that. Play, they'll probably even come down even more. Maybe so maybe a know. really good yeah. each way bet, but yeah. my, my lock yeah. is lost and running. Maybe oh, chuck so it in. there's Evie Rose. You know, I'm just I like that. That's a bit of a name bet thing for me as well. There you go. Cute. Thank you, Rando. Cute. All right. Uh, and we've got our deckhand. He's got Nature Strip as well, and Mazu top four. Same race multi is him. He's got an SR. M. Good for him. That's deckhand shit. Uh, quickly, we move to Devin Haney, George Cambosis Jr. rematch. First fight was uh, a stale bottle of piss, but Haney got the job done. Uh, it's difficult. One, one for the fucking purist, the first yeah. fight. Good Lord. Um, this one is at um, Rod Laver, I believe. Rod Laver. Rod Laver Arenes. Um, the rematch, I, it's hard to see it going any different, but I've learnt from my... Um, Volkanovski errors and just you just get on the back of an Australian and I've gone ferocious decision at 11 bucks I off the back of the first fight that you and I were at Tom I don't think that Cambosis can outbox Haney no I don't think that if you go into like your dark place like he's talking about and he's sleeping in the fucking gym and he's leaving no stone unturned I just don't think that he can he can outpoint Haney I think he's too slick so I think he needs to go out there and fucking just pressure him and hopefully just land an overhand and just you know, knock an him overhand out. right or something and knock him out. So for that reason, I'm going to Cambosis KO at 11 bucks. I think it's the only way he can win. I desperately want him to win. This is this is a heart bet. I got to tell you, this isn't this isn't a head bet at all. This is all heart. I'd like to see an Australian get all the belts once more, and I think the only way it does that is knocking that fucker out. So 11 bucks KO. Beauty. Uh, I'm going Cambosis here. Obviously, he's 20 and 1, and that one loss, obviously, going to Haney. So I feel like he's got revenge here in the backup fight. So I'm just taking Cambosis straight up. 
And Seba. Yep, proud Greek Australian. George, me, you yep. got to back him in just for the win. Because I screwed up the first time we better on him. Not the Haney fight, but who do you... Who do you uh, Teofimo win? Lopez. Yeah. I picked him. And I, I picked maybe... Yeah, I'm a sort of exotic. I didn't get the clean win. He was paying eight or nine bucks. I'm just backing Georgie Boy to get the win here at six bucks. Six bucks is good odds just for yeah. the win. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. that is good. And then we've got our deckhand going. Haney, decision, dollar seventy three. Deckhand, just just a fucking straight up and down Unanimous guy. Unanimous decision. Yeah. Yeah. Unanimous. Uh, you know, he's... But he's, you know... Deckhand shit right there. That's responsible, reliable deckhand yeah, shit. Yeah, everyone else is having fun wanting to pull into like a rum port or something and he's like, nah, nah we got to keep going. Nah, and no, 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 no. Just Otherwise, like... we, we're not going to get the win. <laughs> we're not going to get there. <laughs> All right. Um, we move on now to the kitchen sink multi. Each pick a leg, you know the rules. Um, I'm going to go Brock Jarvis to defeat Liam Pyro. They fight on Saturday night. Um... South Brisbane, South Bank fucking Piazza or whatever it is in Brisbane. South Bank, one of the great shitholes of all time. No offense to Brisbane, but it's a <laughs> shithole. Couldn't find a fucking cafe to save your life for breakfast. Fuck South Bank with respect. Brisbane generally I like. Brock Jarvis to defeat Liam Paro, two undefeated Australians. Very, very big fucking fight in the context of the super lightweight uh, division, but not much spoken about. Uh, this fight generally in the broader Australian public, but obviously now we're friends with Eddie Hearn. I don't know if you've seen him. <laughs> we'll be so friends. Brock Jarvis uh, at 275. Brock's gorgeous. He's hot as shit. He's fucking delicious. Yeah. Um, Man City take on Liverpool this weekend. Oh, back to <laughs> oh, no. I'm back. I am back. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool aren't going that well. Man City are fucking flying. Everyone's on Erling Haaland to score goals. He's, he's a bit short for mine, but Phil, Fold, Phil Foden, who scores a fuckload, proud Manchester boy, three bucks, like it. I think I think that City embarrassed Liverpool this weekend, and I think when that happens, Phil will Phil, score. Okay. Rando? Uh, I'm going Scotland minus 12 and a half against Italy. Um, I really like the Scots here to, to get the job done. Uh, they've got some really good halves compared to Italy, who... They do have Cooper Johns, but not much else going on for them. They've also got Ewan Aiken and uh, Blast from the Past, Kane Lynette for Scotland in the centres. So Kane Lynette. Kane Lynette. So he's still yeah, floating no. around. He's still, he's still having a crack. He's had How a old is he? He'd be he super was, league. I thought, yeah. No, he was. Super he, league. Oh, he sure. came on at like 19 for the Roosters in 2010, so he's still got a few. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, he's he's been, he's, he wouldn't be that old, but he's like... Uh, but if I haven't seen him for years. But if, no, so. but I mean, if, you're in a, if you're 31, you're a super league 25-year-old. Yeah, you are. You know? He's like, man, there's still potential, but... Scotland just have a much more superior side than Italy, uh, so I do like them to take that. Uh, Ryan Brealey, uh, I probably got the name butchered, but he's playing number seven for Scotland. He had 31 try involvements in 23 Super League games this season for Salford, uh, alongside Brody Croft there. If anyone was following the English Super League at all, um, Brody Croft winning the Man of Steel. So awesome. I really like him to have a real good crack there and uh, probably pour some points on because I don't think Italy has too many. Up okay. So minus twelve and a half for dollar ninety. All right, and Sibo. Look, it wow. would just be silly not to include the Everest as part of a KSM on you know as as the weather's getting better, as there's a bucks happening, as just everyone's getting excited for summer. You know, the world's richest race or Australia's richest race. You've got to throw in uh, a, a donkey, and I'm going Nature Strip. Won it last year. He's always been good to me, and just go the favourite. Because we don't want to make this multi too crazy. And what we want it to happen. It's looking pretty fucking crazy at this point. <laughs> uh, that kitchen sink comes to 34.48. That's juicy. That's good, honest juice. And it's a nice way to kick off a season. Uh, we move to our unit scoopers. Now, I will let you in a little secret. Rando had to leave. We were so close to getting it all in beforehand, but Tobler didn't do his job. And so, as a result of that, Rando had to go. That's obviously going to come down to, like, there's going to be some hard conversations had after this, I'd say, Eddie, with Tobler. Look, I mean, is it an official strike? I, I'll, let the, I'll let the punter and the dribbler. You know what, leave a comment if you think that should be an official strike against yeah. Tobler. Yeah. I think he, that's probably important. He only gets two. Yep. So that'd be halfway towards that sacking. Yep. Um, we now do go to our unit scoopers, though, and I will, uh, let's just get Rando out of the way. He's gone England to win. Australia minus 38.5, Scotland minus 12.5, New Zealand minus 38.5, Ireland minus 34.5, France minus 24.5 at 58.56. Fuck, that's pretty good if you're just relying on some humpings. Yeah, it's not bad. Look, 
It's not bad at all. Yeah. I um I get a good vibe from that bet. Yeah. I'm going for a, an Ozaki eight in the World Cup. Ah, yeah. Is there eight games? Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm going for an Ozaki eight. Uh, <laughs> I've never done one. <laughs> talk and us so through it. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk you through it. The last game being 5.30 a.m. next Thursday. So it'll be before we've, this show is recorded. So we will know at that point. I'm going Samoa minus three and a half against England. I'm going Australia minus 38 and a half against um, Fiji. Scotland minus 12 and a half against Italy. Ireland minus 34 and a half against Jamaica. I've lost to random county team. Fame. Cumbria or something. Cumbria. <laughs> New Zealand minus 38 and a half against Lebanon. Yep. France minus 24 and a half v Greece. Oh, it's a toughie there. I don't know if it is, dude. Um, <laughs> Tonga minus 27 and a half v Papua New Guinea. Wales, uh, sorry, Cook Islands minus 17 and a half against Wales. That one I just don't know because I don't know what the Welsh bring to that. But that's an Azaki 8 attempt off the rip. World Cup Azaki 8, $169.83. Interesting. Yeah, wow. Yeah. We have to share that one into the uh, the group. Yeah, I will. Anytime one of us puts an Azaki on, I feel it needs to be the opportunity given. Yes. Given. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Give everyone a yeah, chance to jump yeah. on the Ozaki 8. Um, Eddie, what are you doing? I've got a box trifecta for the Everest. I've gone one nature strip, five mazoo, and ten shades of rose. Oh, nice. Boxy. Boxy try. Boxy try. Nice, nice, nice. I've already got the boxy try in my Everest bet, so I'm doing a bit of a standout boxy first four. I'm standing out nature strip. So he's just coming in first. And then for second, third, and fourth, I've got Eduardo, Lost and Running, Marzu, and Private Eye. And putting 10 bucks on that, i.e. unit, will get you 41%. Okay. All right. Beautiful. That's us, punters and dribblers. Thanks for tuning in. As we said, there'll be a pony saddle club tips potty out. A very short, sharp, poundable potty Saturday morning. Um, we've got the Neds group, which will be in over the weekend as well. So make sure you join that if you haven't already. As I said, almost a thousand of you in there, um, where we share bets and we talk a bit of shit during the day. Um, shout out to Neds again for their support, without which the show doesn't happen. Make sure if you're going to have a punt, you do it responsibly and, and get on my Ozaki 8. Be smart. Be smart. See you next week. Bye bye.